Hey there guys, it's Rick Utzer here with Airgun Web, your home for old school Airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. It's cold. We are in uh, West Texas and it's this time of year where it's cold and a little breezy. And while that would be sort of something I would want to avoid mo most of the time, uh, it's actually perfect for today's video. But before I get to that, let me tell you that today's video is brought to you by Pyramid Air. Guys, if you're looking to get like air gun stuff, especially looking to the holidays here, check them out, www.pyramidair.com. They've got everything from low end to high end and everything in between. And they have all the gear you need to make your gear work. So compressors, uh, scopes, mounts, uh, ammo, all that stuff, they've got it again, www.pyramidair.com. Today's video is on the Barra that we learned at Airgun Expo how to pronounce that. It's B-A-R-R-A, -R -R -A, Barra. It's the Barra 400E. Now, I like shooting my CO2, uh, fully automatic CO2 stuff. I call it, it's got the more fun switch. I dig it, I like it, I like it a lot. But when we're dealing with weather like we have now, and it's pretty chilly, I mean, it's barely 50 degrees out here, CO2 does not run well. And even when you have good weather, like in the 70s or 80s, uh, when you run full auto on your CO2, it freezes and you get a degradation in performance pretty quick. So it's a great medium. It's a great fuel for running your air guns. But when you start running full auto, it does start kind of showing some of its uh, uh, weaknesses. Well, for the longest time, guys, I mean, if you've ever done anything with Airsoft, you know that... AE, AEG guns or electric, uh, you know, automatic electric guns have been around for a while. And when you're shooting a larger plastic projectile, they're actually pretty easy to propel at pretty decent velocities. You know, it took a little bit of time, and we actually had Geo up on, uh, again, one of our night wraps for the Airgun Expo, talking about their product and how they sort of came up with this. I mean, the idea of converting um, and AEG to shoot steel BBs, that's certainly not something other people haven't thought of, but it's got some technical challenges. And when you really put your mind to it, uh, you can overcome them, and they have. They've actually created uh, the Barra 400E, and we're talking about a very nice, kind of a very high end, and I want to applaud them because a lot of companies have a mindset where they race to the bottom on price point, and whenever you race to the bottom on price point, you generally find yourself at the bottom of quality too. So you can't have a super high quality product at a really cheap price, yet there's gotta be a balance somewhere. And I know companies try to shoot for the balance, but oftentimes they, they shoot too low and they're building something that's super affordable and the quality's not there. Well, Bara took a different approach and I gotta really applaud them because instead of going for like a super ultra affordable, frankly, quote unquote, cheap gun, they, they made a gun that's that's got, it's, well, when you're looking at fully automatic BB guns, it's expensive, frankly. Um, but I think it comes uh, not at the expense of quality. I think they really went and said, let's make a quality, long lasting air gun because I don't know if you guys have shot a lot of AEG stuff, but you're buying, you know, BBs by the tens and twenty thousands. You're going to run that motor, and it's going to run and run and run and run. You're going to expect it to get a lot of shots. When we were talking to them specifically. He had shot about five hundred thousand BBs through his gun, and if you want to put that into perspective, I did the math, and this is generalizing, you know, price per cartridge. If you ran a typical CO2 gun that used two CO2s in the mag type of a deal. Let's say each cartridge is about 62, 63 cents each. So that's a buck 20 for 60 shots. Get, okay, you get the idea. I did some math there. You're looking at about $10,000 worth of CO2 that he's run through his gun and um, it's just worked. So that's like super durable, right? So that's what, when you're going to try and build something to have that level of durability, you want the build quality to match all the way around it. And unlike some others that are cast or plastic, we actually have a CNC machined aluminum uh, forearm and receiver. So we're talking about some pretty high-end stuff. So the, the price point, and, and I don't know when you may be watching this video, but current price point's around 400 bucks. Now, that's if you already have a charger, you already have a battery. Let's get to that here just for a moment because it is an electric gun. 
Um, you can get it with their battery charger and their battery. Now this is a high quality LiPo battery and they have a special smart charger. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this because it's important that we do. Now this is currently charging. We'll let this charge while we talk about the gun and we'll shoot it later once the battery's charged. Anyway, they use what's called a balance charger. If you've never run LiPo, back when they first started coming out, um, if you didn't charge those right, you could get a fire and when they when they catch fire you can't put the dog on thing out it's going to burn your stuff down so it's super important that you run quality cells with a, an appropriate smart charger and this charges balances the cells does all of that and if you want that with the kit let's say you don't have a battery you don't have a charger we well, could do so for another 50 bucks and that's a pretty decent deal i mean last time i looked it was about 450 for the gun with the battery and charger, that is a, a very good deal in my opinion. So how many shots do you get out of uh, a battery, like a full charge? You get about a thousand rounds, and I think from what we were talking, uh, again, in the interview we did, um, you, you get more than that, but I think a safe amount is about a thousand rounds. Uh, you equate that to a typical CO2, CO2 usage, and you're looking at about $20 worth of CO2 per charge of the battery so you know again let's look at the cost of the gun again it's expensive compared to other options on the market but cnc machined aluminum pretty awesome um, it's heavy it's about seven and a half pounds it has select fire for both semi and full full auto rates about 550 rounds per minute um, yeah pretty slick it does come with some interesting sights we have sights here that actually are uh, have like, uh, I guess they're like for close quarter target acquisition kind of a deal. They're not adjustable fiber optic sights, sort of just get in the general vicinity. And then you have your flip up AR sights and the rear sight is adjustable for windage. The front sight is not adjustable for elevation. So again, that those sights are really for get close, right? If you want to have more precision and we're going to do some accuracy here. I think you guys will be impressed with the accuracy. I know I have been. If you want more precision, you can go with a red dot. Now I've mounted a Hawk Endurance red dot here. I like these scopes because how many times have you been out? Maybe you've used red dots a lot like I have. How many times have you been out and forget to turn the dog on thing off and you go to use it and you need it, you got no, you got no dot. Well, this senses lack of motion and shuts itself off. And when you pick it up, it will actually turn back on, which is kind of cool. So they've got some really cool features there in the scope. Um, I, I, it, I don't remember the price point on the optic. It's sort of middle of the road for Hawk. It's, it's not their low end vantage line. It's a little bit higher up. So you're gonna pay a little bit more, but it's got some really cool features. Now I'm charging this battery with this battery pack that I got. Um, so these guys, uh, they sent me this. I've been using the crap out of it for charging phones, charging, uh, running computers, running my cameras. Uh, super handy to have something like this. I'm going to move this out of the way, and we'll go through, um, you know, the various other features of the gun, I'll show you how to load the mag and so forth. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Be right back. So we've got a 50-round magazine. It's got a, a spring-fed system, so you're going to load this, and it pushes the BBs up through. So you don't have to wind it like you do, like, uh, your typical airsoft. It doesn't work like that. It's actually got a fairly robust spring. And let's go ahead and load it. Now, there's a trick to this. This is a, a speed loader. And um, I have a love-hate relationship with this little guy right here. Um, sometimes I love to hate it. But when it works, it works really good. And then you'll get that odd size BB that gets jammed up and, and you really want to pitch it against the wall. Um, what I have found, and uh, this is my two cents worth is a couple drops of silicon oil um, in the reservoir not a lot just a little bit before you put you know fill this up to put your rest of your BBs in it and then shake it up real good and that will kind of let the BBs slide around a little bit and the silicone should not give you any fits with your gun right you don't want to use WD-40 or anything like that we're using pure silicone here which should be fine um, the magazine, again, I don't know if I've said it already, it's a 50 round mag. And we'll talk about why I'm using the uh, Umarex BBs here too. Okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna shake these up and it's just gonna lube those BBs up. Um, I got one thing I gotta check. Let me go take care of that, I'll be right back. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make sure these are good and lubed up. Okay, now to go ahead and load this, you're gonna put these two pieces together here and just push the button. And now we're getting to that idea that I said about earlier, which I have my love-hate relationship with the doggone thing. Okay. Every now and then, you get this BB that's not quite sized right, and it doesn't want to feed. When it works like this, it's great, right? So we're loading in 50 rounds. You get to the end, and when you can't push in anymore, we're done. <laughs> you can't push in anymore, the mag is full. You can get additional mags. Now, again, we're dealing with a gun here, which has, um, it's electric. So, you know, you don't, I mean, you can have extra mags, but it's electric, you're not dealing with CO2. So when you have extra mags, you're gonna hot swap or, you know, you go do quick a quick swap on the magazine. Um, you don't have to worry about, is my CO2 charged or any of that? You got a thousand rounds in your battery, which is pretty stinking cool, right? Um, let's talk a little bit about performance. Now, it's interesting because I'm at 4,600 feet. So on paper, this is supposed to do about 400 feet per second. And I think at sea level, you would get that. I'm getting about 360, but I am at 4,600 feet. And why that's important is there's a little chamber in there and you have a little piston that's being actuated so that chamber fills with air the piston moves and that's what sends your bb down the barrel right so if the air in that chamber is thinner which it is up here you're not going to get as much power because you don't have the same volume as you would at say sea level so 400 and some feet per second at sea level i would say absolutely probably you're going to get it up here we're right around 360 which for a bb gun isn't bad if that was if there was a little bit of a downside to this system versus CO2, it is that you wouldn't have that with CO2. CO2 would just work, sort of like a PCP works and re regardless of your elevation or, or temperature or whatever. Um, CO2 doesn't, okay, let's, let me back up. PCP works well at any elevation, it's, and it's not temperature dependent. CO2 works at any elevation, but is temperature dependent. So you have to sort of balance what's gonna be the better option. If you have cold weather or you wanna shoot in any sort of environment, the AEG is a great way to go. Um, a couple other things, and I'm just letting that battery uh, do a little more charging before we go and start using it. A Couple other things, when you go to use this, um, if you've ever fired a, a traditional CO2 gun like this, you've got a hammer and you've got a sear, and you've got things that when you pull the trigger, it's an instant fire. This has a little bit of a motor in there. So if you've shot AEG, you know that you pull the trigger and it's like and then it shoots. So there's a teeny little bit of a hesitation there. It takes a little getting used to. Um, uh, Evanex had a gun years ago. There was a hunting gun that had an electric motor in it and it didn't work for hunting because the animal would hear the motor and take off. Don't try and hunt with this, okay? It's not meant for that. It's meant for shooting uh, targets and having a lot of fun while you do it. So I'm gonna go hang some targets now. We'll go ahead and get ready to um, probably pause, let that battery finish up, and we'll, uh, we'll get some targets set up. We'll be back, we'll do some shooting, and we'll finish up with our, our look here at the Barra 400E. Be right back. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our gun ready to fire here. Um, the battery is stored here at the back. My fingers are very cold. It's very cold out here, guys. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you've got a connector at your standard. Like if you've done anything with RC airplanes, this is a very standard connector. Um, prevents you from putting it, you know, hooking it up wrong and all that fun stuff. Um, also, same thing with AEGs. They have the same type of connector. Okay, so we'll get this all tucked back in there. So we're all set now. Um, yeah, this loads and operates like any other gun at this point. Um, we've got our selector here, so that's safe. 
that is semi and that is full auto. So we'll go on safe for now. Um, we'll make sure our scope is up and running here. Yep. Um, I am going to fire um, just a couple shots. We're at 11 yards right now. So we may stretch this out a little bit. I haven't really shot. I haven't tried to see how far I can shoot with this, but I think we'll probably do that today because I haven't really done that yet. And I think it'll actually surprise us how well it'll do. Okay, so let's flip this around. One of the things on the receiver, we have M-lock rails here. So if you wanted to put an M-lock bipod here or lasers or whatever you want on this, you're all set to do it. Again, I'm gonna keep coming back to this. CNC machined aluminum is way better than cast or plastic. Just a really nice feature set. Um, mentioned, went to mention it a little bit earlier, and I know you guys are just saying, Rick, just start shooting already. Um, on the ammo, please make sure you use high quality precision ammo. There's always gonna be a little bit of a variance, but if you get the better stuff, like I found the Umarex zinc plated are really good, the Daisy zinc plated are really good. I'd stay away from copper plated. They tend to foul, they tend to flake, and they will absolutely mess up your gun. So my advice, stick with the zinc plated stuff, you'll be happier in the end. Uh, maybe a little bit more expensive, but definitely stick to the zinc. All right. All right, we are locked in. Our charging handle, it's got an adjustable stock, you know, your typical AR, your typical AR stuff. Okay. So super nice sight picture, by the way, on this scope. A lot of red dots will have a lot of bleed over. It looks really good. Um, the suppressor on the end of this is not a real suppressor. It's a faux suppressor, and the barrel goes all the way to the end. Safe. Uh, all right, we'll go semi. How many times I shot, but that's close to 50, I think. Let me see here. Yeah, we're out, so about 50 rounds. Um, I think you guys can pretty much see that accuracy is not going to be a problem with this thing. I think what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and rip it full auto so you guys can see the difference or hear the difference. Let me go grab that target, swap it out, and then I think we need to back this up and see what it looks like uh, the further back we go. So I'll be right back. Okay, so if you want to get an idea, that's what we're getting uh, for shot group. Um, and as you heard, I, I was just pulling the trigger. I wasn't like trying to shoot super accurate. Of course, the trigger is more of a switch than it is like something that's physically hanging on a sear. Trigger pull is like nothing, probably way under two pounds, probably more like a pound or so, but just super smooth. It's just because it doesn't have like a sear to hang on or any, any of that stuff. All of the workings in the guns all done by the battery, right? So when you have like you, some of your other guns where you're pulling the trigger and it's trying to move a belt and doing all this stuff um, that makes the trigger pull miserable, this has got a great trigger pull. It's super easy. So let's fill the mag and let's run, let's rip full auto and we'll see what the difference looks like um, between the two. And then we'll back it up. Um, that little teeny bit, uh, I mean, and I mean, a couple drops of silicone, I think really helps. Um, from when I first started using it, there was somebody that mentioned that as a, as a trick, and it, uh, it really seems to work well. Okay, so we're gonna switch over. Uh, I'm gonna take, no, I'm just gonna go full auto. You guys ready? Full auto, and here we go. Oh, let me charge it, I guess I need to charge it. Here we go. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Now, um, you can hear the cyclic rate is a little bit slower than you'd have in like maybe some of the CO2 guns I've shot, but, uh, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> and all I was trying to do was just hold that red dot. It was kind of bouncing around, but it was just trying to hold the red dot on the center of the target. And uh, I think he did pretty good. Let me go grab that. I'll be right back. Um, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> what do you guys think? Um, that's cool. Now, 
I, you know, I want to go back to this difference between CO2 and AEG because it's 50-ish here. I mean, if I mean, it may not even be that warm. It's very chilly. <laughs> If I had just done that with CO2, I would have to go get two new CO2s, even though they're probably not empty. I'd have to go get two warm CO2s or have different mags, and I'd have to figure something out to be able to shoot again. But because this is electric driven, I can just go fill my mag up and I can go right at it, right at it, right at it, right at it, and never stop up until I need to recharge the battery. And if I had a couple different batteries, well, gosh, all we do is have a couple batteries ready to go, and you can, you're going to get a lot of shooting in, okay? The point, uh, I think that point is really the point, right? Um, I'm going to go grab a target, and I'm going to just, I don't want to go like crazy, but I'll probably take this out to 15 yards, which is a pretty good range for a BB rifle um, as far as from accuracy goes, and I don't know, I've never shot that far with it. I've only kept it to 10 to 11 yards, which we're at 11 yards now, um, but let's see. I'll put a shoot and see on the target. We'll Back it up to 15 yards, and we'll see what we get. And I'm going to go try and get my hands to warm up. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab, some, grab a couple targets, and we'll, uh, we'll shoot that and then wrap this up. Be right back. Okay, so I walked it back, and we are at a, right around 17 yards, so a little bit further than 15. And uh, we've got two targets this time. So I'm going to take a minute and see where we're going to land. As you can see, you're going to go through a lot of BBs, man. <laughs> a whole whack load of BBs. Okay. Okay. Now, I do not know where I'm going to hit. So, we are at 17 yards. I'm going to take a shot at the left target. Uh, well, we hit in the black, so let's go for it. Okay. Um... That's 15 yards. I think we did okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, well, heck, let's run full auto, right? And then we'll go ahead and wrap this up. We're out. All right, so we're going to rip full auto on that last target. I'll go grab those, and then we will wrap up this video. All right, full auto. Let's go grab them and we'll call this a day. Be right back. Okay, so that was like single, you know, semi auto. And then this was full auto. And I think we just blasted this to the point where it just pushed through it, just got a hold in the paper with the target to push the target through it. But I think you guys get the idea. Um, even at range, uh, and that was 17 yards, this thing did a great job. Guys, if you're interested in this gun, you want to know more about it, maybe there's some things I missed and you want some more details, you can check them out at pyramidair.com. They'll have, you know, all the super specifics down there. They'll tell you, you know, probably all the stuff I forgot, they'll have right there on the product page. You can also check them out at Barra Air Guns, too. You can check them out there. But definitely check it out, pyramidair.com, www.pyramidair.com. Check them out. If you have any questions, you know, reach out to them. They'll be sure to help you out. That's going to be it for now, guys. Just a really cool air gun. I hope that gets across the idea of why this is a very neat offering in the air gun space. I mean, we have other guns that are full auto and the CO2 and et cetera, et cetera. But this, battery-powered, cold-weather friendly, just a really, really fun gun. We shot 200-some rounds today without a hitch, and I've got thousands of rounds through this without a hitch. And... I think even though this is higher up on the price point, 
Um, the durability, longevity, the build quality, it all justifies the price. So if you guys have been curious about that, don't worry about it. It's worth the money, in my opinion. That's going to be it for now. My name is Rick Huser here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.